what is a done deal we have raised so far five thousand seven hundred and forty nine english pounds sterling oh, Christ. Uh, wow. where's it going so thank you very much for that and Tattoo's coming. Thank you everyone who donated on last night's episode of Quizzle Mania, where you helped raise £6,678 for the Mayo Clinic, whose facilities treated Brody Lee before his passing late last year. Which is way over the £5,000 target where Tempest would have to get a Jam That Jam tattoo. And the best guys, you can still donate using the link in the video description below. Support Wrestle Talk! Support each other. Shortly before last Friday's episode of SmackDown, Roman Reigns reportedly nixed his special request segment, despite WWE's social media team already advertising it, with him and Paul Heyman instead booking another show-closing beatdown of Kevin Owens. And it turns out that special request segment wasn't just DJ Uso playing music tracks for the Thunderdome. That is a freaking fantastic pun! In fact, it seems the originally planned segment might have included a rather huge main roster debut. The ever-reliable WrestleVotes tweeted, just heard an interesting story. NXT talent was slated to be called up to SmackDown last week, as of Showtime was written into the main event segment with Reigns, Uso and KO. Said talent is on tonight's big NXT card, so curious to see if it was pushed a week or scrapped altogether. Fightful Select then added, we can't speak to his participation in the storyline, but Fightful has learned that Damian Priest was being planned for a call-up as of earlier this week. The big NXT card that WrestleVotes spoke of was last night's New Year's Evil, which saw Karrion Cross defeat Damian Priest in a very physical bout on the show, a loss that could potentially foreshadow Priest being called up imminently, potentially as early as tomorrow's SmackDown. What do you think WWE's original plans for Damian Priest in the SmackDown main event could have been? Let me know in the comments where I'll be replying to people from out of nowhere saying no Vince McMahon, Damian Priest is isn't Samoan, he's Puerto Rican. But as we always knew, the answer isn't in building new stars, it's about bringing back part-timers. While well, this week's Legends Night special episode of Raw was critically panned for unnecessary nostalgia cameos and Goldberg making his latest return to challenge for a top title, the show drew an average of 2.13 million viewers, which is the first time Raw has broken the 2 million barrier since the post-SummerSlam episode on August 24th, putting it amongst the highest rated episodes since the lockdown era began. Of course, the last time Goldberg caused a ratings bump, WWE changed their long-term WrestleMania plans and had him beat The Fiend for the Universal title. Run, Drew! Run as fast as you can! Goldberg can only do short bursts of activity, you'll get away fine! But while WWE are looking back to the 90s, AEW are looking back to the 2010s, as last night's episode of Dynamite saw a surprise Bullet Club reunion. Here's my review in about five minutes. Thanks for your support on Patreon, the Kessel Run DX Solo, and WrestleTalk's personal ring announcer, Rodrigo Benitez. JR opened night one of AEW's two-week New Year's Smash event with an intro I hope he keeps for every week. It's Wednesday night. You know what that means. A subtle reminder of the great Brody Lee. The commentary for the entire show, actually, which had Chris Jericho as a fourth man, was terrific. The opening match was a fun, fast-paced eight-man tag of the Young Bucks and SCU against the acclaimed and hybrid two. Hey, I can rap as well. AEW are doing a very good job of steadily building the acclaimed alongside these established acts. Although their opening rap said they're the John Cena and the Young Bucks were the Genetis. I'm not sure that's how that tag team metaphor works. After Matt Jackson awesomely combined with Christopher Daniels for a best Meltzer driver ever combo to win, Kaz reminded us all that SCU's next tag loss means they'll break up, which gives some serious stakes to them challenging for the Bucks' tag team titles. The Go Big Monster Truck debuted to not only promote TNT's new talent show, but also hopefully to build a monster truck tug of war on top of a skyscraper match. Maybe Cody loves WCW too much. 
For the first time in a month, Moxley made his full AEW return since losing the AEW Championship to Kenny Omega, where he cut a fantastic promo putting over how he protected the integrity of the top title during his reign. I believe him, and there is no greater currency in a fake sport than credibility. He teased helping Phoenix in the main event if Omega tried to cheat. Dasher alert! Chucky e. T revealed Trent is out for four to five months, and then rashly accepted a match with Miro, where if he loses, he'll have to become Miro's young boy. Chucky e. has so much untapped comedic potential, I hope that happens. After a months long feud built almost entirely on I f him, Wardlow and Jake Hager finally unleashed their sexual tension the second best way men know how. Fighting. What I loved even more than the meat clash, which included a swanton bomb from Wardlow, was how it presented the inner circle as an honor-based heel faction, where they can fight each other for supremacy without any hint of them splitting up. Storytelling that was massively enhanced by Jericho on commentary. Wardlow really impressively won with the F10, and MJF sincerely gave Hager a pep talk backstage to cheer him up later on. Because wrestling has had Quite enough contract signings, Brian Cage and Darby Allen had a weigh-in ahead of their TNT title match next week, which put Cage at over a hundred pounds more than Allen, while Taz yelled, SOLID MUSCLE! Sting came out before Team Taz could do their usual beatdown. Marco Stunt subbed himself in for Luchasaurus to challenge FTR for next week. Big Money Matt worked out private parties' contracts, which includes them keeping their own cameo accounts, WWE reference, Wink! And then Snoop Dogg, really committed to his Just Eat promotion deal, delivered them some juice backstage. Snoop was also on hand for Cody Rhodes' match against Matt Seidel, not only providing a wrapped over version of his entrance music, but also playing the Arn Anderson coach role. Seidel and Rhodes had a really solid TV match, which Cody won with two crossroads. And then, out came the big dog. N not that one. Serpentico and Luther attack Cody after the bell because of some friendly fire at ringside during the match, which was all a way to set up some high-quality sports entertainment. Snoop Dogg climbed to the top rope to hit a splash on Serpentico. Well, I say top rope splash, I actually mean gentle hop and lay down. You're exposing the business, Snoopy Snoop Lion Dog Dizzle. This was a perfect way to use celebrity cameos. It looked fun. In some great variety formatting, the tone changed completely next for an awesome Abaddon vs Shida horror match. Abaddon sat right back up after being whacked with a kendo stick and then dragged Shida under the ring, implying she ate a bit of her neck, which was actually really effectively done. Shida retained, but this helped put over Abaddon in defeat. And as if all that wasn't enough, the main event was a match of the year contender of Phoenix versus Kenny Omega. They had a fantastic bout, with Omega giving just enough to Phoenix to make it look like Rey could actually squeak out a victory, just as he did against Pentagon at 2018's All In. Phoenix shone brilliantly here, getting a crazy speed dive into the guardrails, a moonsault German suplex on Kenny's head, and an amazing handspring kip up off a V-trigger into a super kick. This is what a great heel champion should do, making you want to see his opponents beat him. But Omega is inevitable. He caught a Phoenix Moonsault in a Tiger Driver 98 and then hit a one-winged angel to win, although some say Ray's shoulder was up. It was hard to cover that though, as there were seven minutes left of the show, and AEW have now taken New Japan's New Year's Dash surprises for their own. Moxley ran down with a barbed wire bat to save Phoenix from Omega, but was then attacked himself by the AEW debuting current Impact Tag Team Champions, the Good Brothers, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson. The super elite is now in AEW. A few of the ringside wrestlers tried to save Mox, but they were just elite fodder. And just when you think it couldn't get any better, the Young Bucks ran down and helped. It was done in such a way though, where they did seem conflicted and tried to talk reason into Omega, hesitantly raising their hands for the show closing. Too sweet. AEW are so good at giving you a surprise you kind of expected, like the Good Brothers turning up, that was just a matter of time really, but then going one further and adding a layer of beautiful complexity, like having the conflicted Bucks also join them to embolden the new interpromotion Super Elite 
faction because New Japan owned the Bullet Club name. Carl Anderson then tweeted a picture of them all wearing championship gold with the hashtag for life, the Bullet Club catchphrase without saying Bullet Club, getting a head shaking reply from the actual Bullet Club's Tama Tonga. And in a post show interview, Don Callis told Alex Marvez that Kenny will team with the Bucks in a six man tag next week. The band are back together ahead of Impact's Hard to Kill pay per view next Saturday. What do you think of AEW Dynamite? Let me know in the comments and follow at WrestleTalk underscore TV to vote in our poll on a poll match. Where 66% of you rated the show excellent, one of the highest proportions we've ever had. And I agree. This is comfortably one of the best shows AEW have ever done, and I feel like I say that every other week. And it's only night one of New Year's Smash. Great matches with Wardlow vs Hager and Omega vs Phoenix, fun sports entertainment with Snoop Dogg, and an industry-changing Bullet Club reunion to start the year. There was something for everyone here, and it was all really good. I unabashedly, unapologetically love this company. This week's Dynamite is four out of four. The backstage raw chaos behind Goldberg's return has come out. Click the video on the right for the full situation explained. And watch our Brody Lee charity episode of Quizzlemania by clicking the video below that, where you can still donate at the link below. I've been Mr. Davis. Jam that jam.